Saul Weisenberg, uh, former deputy to independent counsel under Ken Starr and a Fox News contributor. Saul, you were listening in with us there uh, as we learn more about this whistleblower claim brought to the attention uh, uh, to us by Elijah Cummings, who you saw chairing that committee there, over President Trump's security team and their their clearances, their security clearances. Uh, there were some questions reportedly, and they were overturned. What, do, what were you thinking as you listened on there? Well, it's a political issue. It's a policy issue. Keep in mind that the whole system of security clearances uh, ultimately derived decades ago from an executive order. It is entirely in the discretion of the president. So there's no legal issue at all. The president's authority here is uh, supreme. Now, who knows whether or not this woman has a a point to be made, whether her concerns are legitimate, or whether this is an, an example of the intelligence community, uh, the background community, the FBI community that has a hand in these security decisions is striking out uh, against President Trump. Uh, who knows? That's something that Congress has the right to get to the bottom of, but it isn't a legal issue at all. The president has the authority. You can't have so some low-level functionary call, right? so making that decision. It's, it's his absolutely call his call. Uh, let's entirely. get to the, to the subpoena. Today was the deadline that Nadler wanted to see. The Mueller report is going to come and go. It will not be satisfied. Maybe you get it 10 days from now. Maybe it's 15 days from now. Maybe a little less. Can Democrats win on this subpoena that we expect tomorrow for the Mueller report? Well, the, uh, I don't think they can. The first question is, what is Barr going to do? Is Barr going to ignore the subpoena? and risk contempt, or is he going to challenge it in court? My feeling is that he's going to challenge it in court. That will tie the process up for a while. During the interim, he's going to be submitting his 400-page partially redacted report, and that could totally change the dynamic. But if we go to court, I believe he wins, because I don't think any judge is going to let Congress force the executive branch to go get, get an order from a court releasing grand jury material. Under the statute, Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure 6E, which has the force of statute, it is the executive branch that applies to the court for an exception to 6E. So I don't think, uh, I don't think Nadler is going to win that uh, battle in court. How does this compare um, to when Bill Clinton was being investigated? The top Democrat here, Jerry Nadler, calling for the full release of this report now, but it seems it was different back then. Is it fair to compare? I'm just absolutely shocked that a member of Congress would be so hypocritical. Mm. Uh, it's, it's obviously fair to compare, and there's total, there's a lot of hypocrisy on both sides here. In our case, we went and got a court order. Uh, and But that court order was to submit uh, Judge Starr's report under seal to the Congress. It was Congress that made the decision, uh, a decision that we were all shocked by, to release it two days later publicly without ever having uh, read it. Um, so we went a different way. We had a statute that basically said if you, if you reached a trigger where you thought you had to file an impeachment report, that report had to be filed with Congress. And so we had that statutory background, which, uh, which Barr doesn't have. I personally think Barr should have gone to a court uh, to get exceptions to 6E, but that's the, there are arguments on the other side. You know, when people go to the grand jury, they are told, your testimony is going to be secret here. They're told that. And I but think that wasn't uh, that wasn't the case with Ken Starr and Jerry Nadler 21 years ago. You know, he, he's on the Charlie Rose show at the time in 1998, talking about all this evidence should be made public to them. Ken Starr, however, was independent counsel. I just want to draw a distinction here. He was working outside the realm of the Department of Justice. Bob Mueller's not. He works for Rosenstein. So Ken Starr was on with Shannon last night and described it this way. Okay, watch here. I had to turn over the report directly to Congress, not to the Attorney General, not to the three-judge panel, certainly not to the White House. Uh, and what Chairman uh, Nadler was uh, crying for then really was a process. And what the regulations that uh, Bob Mueller operated under and that Bill Barr is bound by contemplates exactly the kind of process that I think now Chairman Nadler was urging then. So, Saul, so just to quote Ken Starr, I had to turn over the report directly to Congress, not to the Attorney General, not to the three-judge panel. If that were the law today, Congress could leak whatever it wants to leak. 
So ultimately, what decision do you, be, do you expect here? I believe that Bill Barr, the Attorney General, is going to make as much of the report public as he can, and he wants to do it without getting a 6E order because he wants to protect the privacy of third parties. It's really going to be a question, of, but I think almost all of it will be released, and I hope people will be satisfied by it. And to your point about it being political, Jim Jordan echoing that, and we heard from him just a moment ago there, but on this he said uh, they're at this point because the Mueller report was not the bombshell that they had hoped for. Saul Weisenberg, we appreciate you coming on the program this morning.